Uh, Kyle, just ju jump in. I, 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 I have you on so many records, and uh, you know you, you've been one of my favorite bass players for such a long time. So I'm really happy we get to talk a little. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to start this talk with, but with uh, asking you, I really enjoyed, you know, the honor, simplicity, and sidegeist records, which are beautiful. And I want to ask you about uh, your writing as well. But like, uh, what's happening on the department of band leading? Are you still, do you still like have a trio or quartet? And are you still planning to release something as a band leader in the upcoming? Yeah, in fact, there are two projects. One is uh, there's a new Garage Mahal album in the okay. works. Oh, okay. um, and uh, so Garage Mahal now is Farid Haq on guitar, myself. And then we have two younger musicians, Hassan Hurd, who plays with Larry Graham here in Oakland. Mm. Uh, he's a church drummer, you know, from the gospel yeah. church. Okay. And then we have uh, um, Oz Ezeldin, um, originally from Cairo, Egypt. Oh. Uh, he worked with John McLaughlin, with uh, um, Billy Cobham, and also with Dave Weckl. He lives here right now. Mm. And so those are the two new members in Garage Mahal. And we go in the recording studio tomorrow. And uh, uh, we're in there for three days, and hopefully we'll get together an, 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 another nice band album, you know. So this would be under the name Garage Mahal as a co-leader project yeah. between Farid and I. And then the new members, you know, are being introduced. Yeah, yeah it's, that'll be fun. Wow, beautiful. And uh, the other part is that um, um, I'm working on a bass solo record, and I've been working on it for three years already. Um, and it's finally coming to the last like composition. Um, it's a concept album. Um, it is a, a combination of um, playing harmonies on the bass with slap technique, yeah. um, and then using the the Indian uh, conical system or the the mathematical concept of of odd meters and groupings, um, and uh, to uh, bring that together in in one uh you know ba bass technique um in fact i have my bass here maybe at the end of the interview oh please i, I would love to hear that so yeah. you can hear what it sounds like wow, beautiful. um and so this will be uh, an album of seven compositions maybe maybe eight if if i come up with something else um each composition is in a different time signature and it follows a specific language um and um I'm hoping that, you know, it would add to the amazing variety that is out there in, in bass styles and uh, go in a bit of a different direction than, um, you know, turning the bass into a bebop solo instrument, you know, which I think has been sufficiently explored recently. Yeah. Um, and there are so many avenues that bass players can take that go in another direction that adds something different, you know, mm. um, because I've always felt, uh, you know, now I'm getting older, I'm asking myself questions also about um, the meaning of uh, competition, you know, because I see that our world on some level is very competitive and it has now gotten more so with the internet okay. where uh, there is a, um, a whole, I would say, a family of musicians that are primarily internet musicians. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, the currency is likes and clicks and views. And then uh, uh, everyone is trying to be as creative as possible to attract attention. And then on the back of that attention, you have an industry that is harvesting data, um, selling advertising, sure. um, and that whole model, I, I, it, it, I am not like comfortable with it, you know. Um, I still like the idea of community and people creating relationships and bands and get together, you know, to, to work uniquely with human beings. 
mm-hmm. and uh, to to be careful with the use of technology. Uh, you know, because whenever you ad- adopt something new, you sacrifice something else, sure. and often we don't realize what we sacrifice when we become enamored or or uh, starry eyed. You know, with new technology apps and and uh, ai and you know all that stuff yeah. so you know there, there is something that that i think is very uh vulnerable at the core of it that should not be uh flushed down the toilet <laughs> too yeah. easily yeah. so i'm all i'm saying is like i'm i'm still like um, not a hundred percent sure of what's going on with the music you know uh, at large but I do um, see a connection, you know, like, uh, I always look at life as a holistic thing. So rather than saying there's good and there's evil, I look at good and evil as being manifestations of the same entity. Mm-hmm. And so when there is evil or when there are bad things, you know, I'm always trying to see what what happened, what is the history, you know, and uh, um, so in a way, yeah, to, to come back around to what I was saying earlier, um, presenting an, a new uh, voice on the bass, I think is kind of something that I really, really want to do before I die. <laughs> and I want to present it correctly, sure. you know, not li- little in- little videos here and there, but a, a, here's an album, here's the concept, you know, and, 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 uh, um, Here's good sound for you, you know, really yeah. well recorded. Yeah. So the last thing I'll say is, is um, all the material on the new on the solo album. Um, the name of the album is going to be um, Seven Deadly Sins and Lively Virtues." <laughs> and um, okay, well, so the the concept of the album is that uh, there's no improvisation. Everything, every cons, every um, composition is through composed. Wow. Okay. Um, and I'm going to play each composition twice, and then I'm going to put one performance in the left ear and one performance in the right ear, and so you get a natural stereo chorus that makes the sound really big. And I think okay. that's going to sound really nice for people Ooh. to listen. Beautiful. Oh man, when is it coming on? Uh, when do you plan plan to release it? I mean, well, I'm on my last composition, and it's the hardest one. It's in nine. Um, you know, I'm just working on it every day, and it's going slow. So I think if I'm realistic, like definitely next year. You know, okay. but it might be towards the later half of the next year. But super. But yeah. 24. I gotta, I gotta lay the egg. <laughs> I gotta yeah, lay yeah. this egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, I wanted to ask you. You know, you said you're gonna investigate or are investigating odd meters and time signatures. And you know, when I listen to your tunes or playing with other people, you seem to be so comfortable playing seven or five or eleven. Mm-hmm. How have you practiced? How do you still practice, or have you practiced becoming comfortable? in an odd meter like what's your process there well i think the um the synthesis is to take everything that you've learned and put it together and see how it fits into a a concept Mm -hmm. and so uh, once i learned uh, to play with indian musicians this started in 1987 when i met john mclaughlin Um, and then through him in 1988 i met trilo gurtu and then Trilock taught me Conocall, and that's when I, you know, my, my mind exploded <laughs> because up to that point, you know, I was listening to Led Zeppelin, to R and B, funk, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire, Summer Weather Report, you know, I got into Stanley Clark, but still, you know, even Weather Report and Stanley Clark, they are not really all that much into odd meters. No, no, definitely. And so um, it came with Indian classical music. And then later on, you know, I ended up just thinking about it a lot. And um, I found a kind of like a, a, a master exercise that, that uh, 
is sort of like the mother of all exercises for learning odd meters. And like imagine this, um, you know, maybe uh, if I can do a screen share. Yeah, yeah, please. I, I could find it here in in my um, in my Google folder, and and see if I can show it to you. I think I may have already found it if I'm lucky. <laughs> yep, there it is. Okay. So let's see. Oh, um, would you be able to uh, enable participant screen share? Yeah, oh shit. Yeah. So if you go to uh, you know the lower panel yeah. of the screen, uh, there's, there's something share. that Got says it. yeah, I think I did like it. Now. Probably under participants. Yeah, I think I did it. Let's see. Hopefully. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh yeah, right. we got it. Can you see it? Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna minimize this a little bit. So this is basically an exercise uh, that will teach you all polyrhythms, like all of them as in leaving none out, which, you know, follows math. Yeah, you know, sure. mathematics and music yeah. are essentially the same thing. You could look at music as being living math, right? So now imagine you see how you have um, a horizontal axle mm -hmm. that is uh, labeled one through nine, and then a vertical axle that says elevator yep. at infinitum that keeps going up. So there is a nine up there as well. And imagine it keeps going yeah. to infinity. Yeah. Right. And so um, also the horizontal keeps going into infinity. So uh, imagine that this is a building. You have an elevator and those are floors, right? Floor one through eight going up. And then you have rooms and the rooms are first room, second room, se third room all the way. And it keeps going. Now, um, if if you look at the starting point which is down here where the number one is this is one one time one one yeah. one one yeah so the tempo is adjustable you figure out how fast or slow you want to do it um, when you go to the horizontal elevator and you go up the floors um, you are dividing the one into increasing numbers. Mm -hmm. So from one to two to three to four and so on. So if I use Konoko, let's say, you know, ta is one, taka is two, takita is three, takadimi is four, etc. Yeah. So you would have ta, ta, ta be, being the, the bottom. And then let's say you crawl up the wall on the side of the building. It sounds like this, right? Ta, ta. You know, like that. So yeah. you see how the, the, the in this is one one and each beat gets divided like this. So yeah. you can do that on a bass. And it's already a great timing exercise, right? Just a click and just divide your beat in increasing numbers and see how far you can go. And then when you reach your limit, you work on, on that like a, a construction site. Yeah. Let's say if I get to one to five and I lose it at five, then I make five my construction site. And when I get up in the morning to practice for 10 minutes, I work on only five. Okay. I don't work on what I already know. You see, so that's the system. So you make the best out of your time by not repeating yourself and always yeah. finding the border between what you know and what you don't. You see, if you go too far, you get frustrated. If you don't go far enough, you get bored. Yeah, so exactly. right, the, you know. Okay, so now if you go back to the graph, let me now explain what the vertical line is. I'm sorry, the horizontal line. 
vertical is upward, horizontal is la yep. lateral. So the horizontal line going at the bottom uh, to, towards the nine. So if I'm going there, I'm adding numbers. So in other words, like one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, yep. right? And so on. So you see like the beat is here, you add the beats up and it goes um, horizontal. You divide the beat, it goes vertical. Yep. Now so far so good. Yep. Now watch what happens when I go to the second floor, all right? So the second floor means everything I do is divided in two. Yep. That, that one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so now if I go to the second floor and then I visit the rooms horizontally from two to three to four and so on, it sounds like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, 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 yeah? Yep. Now, if I go to the third floor, everything is divided in three. So you start with one, two, three, one, two, three, takita, 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 takita is the rate of subdivision. And then you make that into numbers. Oh, okay. Like, takita, 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 you see yeah, yeah. It well, interesting yeah. because let's say you go to something like five most yeah. people will be lost yeah right but when you study like you know i spend time with this so i go now we're at everything is in five right yeah. Like five against three. Three, yeah. And yeah. you can go on and on like this, and you can see it's very extensive. And so if you work with this type of thing, anything that happens in the studio, if somebody says, Oh, I got the song in eleven, it's like you kind of already know it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know it be ahead of time because you have looked at the whole playing field and you understand how it all connects. How you know, divide it or, yeah. and that's something I recommend to every musician. That's amazing, man. Wow. Is is to spend time on understanding how elements connect with one another. Examine relationships. Mm -hmm. That's the next level of knowledge. You know, too many of us get stuck on individual things, this against that, you know, which is better, which is faster. That's not the interesting thing. Like imagine that all of the stuff, the slow and the fast and the high and the low, the hot and the cold, you know, the good and the bad, they all are part of a playing field. Yeah. It's like you put salt and pepper together and you mix it in a jar and you throw it out on a table. It's all like that, you know, and it's your attention that can point out, oh, now I want to see only the salt, you know, or now yeah, I yeah. want to see only the, the, uh, the pepper. And you see that the way you look at it, the quality of your attention changes the way you see the world. Mm -hmm. now, and now there are underlying patterns between the salt and the pepper there. You can see shapes. Like, why is there, you know, um, a star shape around this thing here, over here, you know, there's more pepper than salt, what's going on? You know, I'm just using an analogy. Analogy, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah. And yeah. so when you understand the relationships, you start to see where the problems are and where the solutions are, you know? Yeah. And uh, that, I think, is important cool because, uh, you know, music is not separate from life. And um, often we we get uh, pushed into corners, like uh, you know we are musicians, we are not scientists, right? We are musicians, we are not physicists. Um, 
but like you examine the relationship between physics and music, between math and music, between yeah. culture and music. And again, the relationships take you to the next level of understanding. You start to see the master patterns behind mm -hmm. everything. You know, I okay. cannot yeah, yeah. see to the end of it uh, because m the world is bigger than my ability to comprehend. Um, but you can advance, you know, and yeah. uh, and get somewhere. Yeah, this is really a good one. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Beautiful. Sure. Man. Uh, well, how do we how do we escape this? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, there we are. One, okay, good. The, you, you answered my question very good. <laughs> now I get you. Like you, you know, when I hear you play, because you 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 so, you make it sound so effortless. You know, with who, whoever, uh, obviously with your yeah, technique. You know, there, there is a, is another thing that might be interesting for viewers uh, about effortlessness, mm -hmm. and um, there is effort, but the effort is in the concentration and not so much in 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 the power of the muscles mm. you see like because the the it's almost like in 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 music to play really good music you want to have both power uh you want to project so that people can feel what you're doing yeah. and you also want to uh you want to uh you want to protect vulnerability. You know, vulnerability is sort of like the part, the emotional center where where you yourself are not secure. You know, it's yeah. almost like I know it's hard to, for me to put that into words, but, but I know too, yeah. it's almost like it's like the the from the vulnerability. You, you, you know, let's say if I am walking through a jungle and I'm not sure if there is an animal that's going to eat me, but the jungle is really interesting and intricate and beautiful. So I'm very intrigued. So I want to go, but I'm scared because I don't know what it is. Yeah. So yeah. if you put yourself into that frame of mind, you are going to be very alert, right? Like all your senses are going to be like open, right? You're listening, you're watching, you're smelling what's going on. You know, you're curious, so the curiosity moves you forward, but your senses are like, if something happens, I'm going to run. I'm going to yeah. turn around and, and go out. So that is what I mean by vulnerability. It's like, you know, um, when, when I play music from that space, it's, it's, I, the music is much more interesting than if I execute music from a place of strength only, right? Like if I come out by saying, I'm a bad bass player, I know I'm going to show you how it's done. Check me out, <laughs> right? There is a, is a cert that something is missing, you know? Like when when you listen to like great musicians, it's it's like almost like when they're right on the borderline of falling apart. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's there's just something so like because I don't know maybe it's because that's how life is you know, hmm. on, on 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 a fundamental level, it's always between life and death you know every second. And so that kind of sensitivity and vulnerability, like you want to have that intact and at the same time produce power, which, which makes yeah. it a paradox. Yeah. And so exactly. the way I solve that or I try to solve that is by telling myself, Kai, keep your body relaxed. Don't, don't force it with your muscles, you know, try to bounce, you know, mm -hmm. on the base like a basketball, use gravity to bounce with the body yeah. and, and, and focus in your mind so that you, you can be very precise with the tempo yeah. and you can also be flexible. That means like you can slow down, speed up, right? I'll, I'll give you an example. Oh, please. Uh, here, all I need to do is, um, I might have to plug in one one cable here. 
and then I can show you what oh, I'm sure, doing. please, yeah. Fantastic. This thing, right, it goes around my foot to keep time. That mm -hmm. way you can hear exactly what I'm doing, yeah. even if it, it's, it sounds like complicated, you know? <laughs> so, okay, I know Zoom sound is not going to be the best. Um, you know, in your upper left screen, yeah. there might be something that says original sound for musicians. That should be on. Uh, oh, that upper, way. Upper. Well, that, well, that. If you don't see anything, then don't worry about it. Okay, I, don't see okay, it. Okay, don't see it. Original sound for musicians. But I just um, switched it on. Okay. So it should work. Okay. So let me see. Yeah, I hear it. Cool. Yeah, I hear it. Cool. The light is a little funny right now because I have my blinds down, so I look yeah. like I'm a steak. Yeah. You know, I'm getting fried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. hey, you know, you can still see it's all right. Huh? Oh man, it's cool. Yeah. Oh, man, it's cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, so what I mean with the flexibility, right? Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna just play in six, right? And this is like my new style that would be on the record, right? So see right now i'm just playing e yeah you know e octave yeah, yeah and fifth, fifth yeah sure. and octave yeah, right yeah, sure. and uh, i'm using strum i'm using thumb right snap and hammer on those are the sounds right so now i will start i will play in six right so one two three four five six I'm going to move the low note first, then the mid, and then the high, and I'll announce it, okay? So you will see how it shifts. So this is the three-part harmony thing, right? So if I go um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here comes the low note, right? just that's one dimension right so now if I want to go and um, change the meter into odd meters so I will show you um, three four five six seven eight nine mm -hmm. okay. right um, okay. same same groove but um, different meters right so start with three one two three Five, six, 
Wait. have this different dimensions you know yeah. Yeah. and uh, um you could call call it out right and say shift now shift now and uh, the groove will be completely even right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it also the flexibility is like i can go very slow let's say i'll i'll do five right i'm in five and i go Right is one, two, three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Playing it over the top like taka taki the taka taki the taka taki the taka taka taki the taka taki the taka taki the exactly. Or I can go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Yep. So if I go And slow yeah, yeah, and then slowly yeah. sped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the 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 way that you get to to being able to be so like fluid inside of it is like you teach yourself to learn the patterns separately, and you play them for a long time. So you know, I will use the bass as a way of meditation. You know, right. some people they go to the yeah. ashram and meditate. For me, it's the instrument is good. I think also meditation is great, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the instrument oh, yeah. can fulfill a similar function where, you know, the thinking is only in the beginning when you figure out what to do. And then when you implement, you have to repeat, you know. And when you're repeating, you have to stop thinking. Because yeah. if you're still thinking while you're repeating, yeah. then you're actually losing energy. So it's the mental discipline thing, you know. And, uh, um, so th this way of yeah. practicing, it's like, yeah. you know, to come around to what you were saying earlier, um, it makes it appear like it's effortless, but it's actually a concentration effort more at this point, more than a, a physical effort. Mm -hmm. I'm using, it's almost mm -hmm. like I'm using more of a bouncing, you know, I mentioned the basketball, you know, like I'm trying to, I'm always trying to focus on how can I play with less effort and and make more sound yeah you know yeah. so if you if you ask the right questions you get the right answer like you work with your body your body tells you hey it, it might be like change your position mm -hmm. you know um, mm -hmm. because I, I worked on this album for so long i started to feel repetitive stress yeah you know and I'm like, oh, oh, my, my body is feeling like, like here, my elbow, something is weird. And so I had to force myself to change technique and shift it to not always force the same um, nerves and muscles. And so I, I'm hoping I can keep it going, you know, sure. because yeah. uh, I uh, uh, see there's sure. a danger, yeah. you know, when you're doing high performance stuff, there's always a danger that uh, you can injure yourself you know yeah. and so one thing i will also recommend yeah. to, to young bass players is really really be sensitive to your body don't force it 
you know ask yourself and also don't stop it doesn't mean that when there is resistance you need to stop it just means you have to find another way through the jungle yeah you know just change your attitude and then you can yeah. go you know what i mean so it's yeah, like, yeah. sure definitely um, yeah. try a, 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 yeah, way, a sure. trial and error yeah. you know you, you could say yeah yeah oh beautiful man just yeah. for sure oh, thanks beautiful. for sharing this for sure. thanks for sharing this yeah 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 Woo. Fantastic. So yeah, uh, I'm happy Fantastic. to answer any more questions. You know, I'm not. I'm. I've been talking a lot. You know. Oh no, that, that's oh, why we're so, doing this. That's why we're doing this. Oh okay. So, right you know, it's. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, I wanted to ask you. You mentioned. I wanted to ask you. You mentioned. Oh, uh, Kai, can, oh you just, uh, Kai, can you just turn off your turn speaker off somehow? Your I got a bounce. Oh, yes. Okay, I hear you. One second. Now I'm hearing kind of like, all right, how is it now? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, no, I still hear it now. Oh, no, I still hear it now. You still hear it? Yeah. A buzz? No, yeah. Not, not like a buzz, but like I hear no, myself. Not like a buzz, but like I hear myself. Really. Oh, okay. Uh, really. Uh, I, I just have to turn this down a little yeah, bit yeah, because maybe, yeah. I, yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. the speakers, you know, in here. Okay. How about now? Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, better. Better? Uh, you can a little, probably yeah. still hear yourself I a little hear tiny it, bit, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. I might be able to do a headphone thing. One second. Okay. How about now? Okay. Test. Test. Yeah. Test. Check. All once. good. All good. Okay. We do yeah. head. We do yeah. headphones. No, I, I wanted to ask you. You mentioned three, three look before, and uh, John, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I listened today to Life at the Royal Festival Hall, and while playing with my 11-month-old daughter, and she loves rhythm, you know, and mm -hmm. we always play on pants and stuff. And this is one of my favorite albums, and you know, it, it's such a beautiful album. It starts with Blue and Green, and you, you have such a nice solo there, and. Like, I mean, just to summarize your experience playing with those two guys, how, how was that like for you? And if you remember the first concert, how was that like with that music? And... Yeah, uh, uh, it, it was actually scary for me, you know, it was not a comfortable experience. Hmm. Uh, I'm really glad that it did um, turn into, you know, such nice recordings and everything. But I felt like I was not on the same level mm. as John and Treelock when I joined the the trio. Um, I didn't even know that music like that existed. <laughs> sure. You know, like when I, I uh, auditioned uh, with John um, and he said that, yeah, you know, I'd like to try this out. Um, when I got the music, uh, I, I had to learn about odd meters and fast playing fast like that, you know, and um, in a way I, I learned all the stuff with cassette tapes <laughs> and then uh, we went to the rehearsal. First rehearsal was not so good, you know, because I was kind of behind on a lot of things. Then I, I had a period of six months where I practiced a lot, you know, right. and then uh, there was a real improvement. And then John was like, okay, let's do this. We're going to go on the road. But then when we were in front of a live audience, the first show with this trio was in Reggio Emilia in ah, Italy. Um, wow, okay. Italy. And I, I got so frightened on stage because okay. the intensity in, in which Trilog was playing and also John was much different from the rehearsals. Mm. You know, uh, they were they were trickier, they were faster. There was adrenaline. You know, there was thousand people in the audience, and uh, I was hanging on to dear life. You know, I got through it somehow, but I had to concentrate so hard not to get lost. You know, and sometimes I would get lost, and I had to look around to find where's one, and jump yeah. back in. And so, you know, I think it took me like a, at least a year and a half to get to a place where I felt like now I'm really comfortable. So I think right at when we recorded live at the Royal Festival Hall, 
that was right when I started to feel comfortable. Not 100%, but... Mm, um, okay. Uh, yeah, so my inner experience was more difficult, you know, with, with this. Um, and then uh, later on, like in 1990, uh, at the end, you know, when, when I left the band, um, uh, I had a, um, a situation in the family where my foster father, he uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You know, I was raised in a foster family mm -hmm. in, in Germany, and uh, um, that uh, was difficult because I would come home from tour, and uh, he, he was living with my foster mom, they're two, both in their, in their mid-80s, okay. and struggling, you know, to stay uh, together, and, you know, the, so I became kind of like a, a caretaker, you know, I started to... Uh, help out with the you know wheelchair with hygiene with doctors appointments all you know everything that needed to be done and um this really kind of like put me in another space mm -hmm. and john no noticed that something changed you know because i was i was uh, kind of a, a i became like closed and withdrawn and you know, and this was the reason that I left the trio, you know, because at one point he, he wanted to know what's going on. And I told him, you know, that things are not good at home. And um, at, that's the time that he was, he, he was like, I have to look for a new bass player because you need to be home, you know. Huh. And uh, um, right the last gig I played with him, I think it was in Hamburg or, or Metz, one of those two places either France or in Germany, that's when I, I was playing the double neck bass at that point. Oh, yeah. That's when I, I, I felt 100% comfortable, <laughs> you know, and then it was over. Mm. <laughs> wow. So that's the story. Well, yeah. But with, with Trilog, yeah. you, you maintained like an amazing <laughs> relationship later, right? Because you, you, you yeah, played yeah, with yeah. him uh -huh. so much. You guys really connected. I mean, Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we did some albums together yeah, and yeah. went to India, and I basically became the bass player for the Trio Guertu band. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For several years. Exactly. Yeah. Until I had a, I, I had a, ch a, a son. Mm. You know, when I was started to have, a, I have two children. When my first child was born, I couldn't travel like that anymore. Sure. Yeah, you know, I made yes. a decision uh, because Trilog's tours were always six weeks. And, you know, I would go and then my son would be like forgetting who I was. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's bad. You know, that's not good. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So then, I, you know, I had to kind of go off on my own and figure it out from there, you know, how mm. to get a good balance between uh, the, the musician's life, family life and and making a living, you know, is, is, is very, very challenging. Everyone knows, you know, if you if you ever wanted to be a full time musician, you know, it's not all glamorous. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, Kai, I wanted to ask you also. Like, uh, I had a seventeen day tour last year with uh, with Bob Moses, and uh, and I know you have a big connection with Bob. For real. Yeah, yeah, with with him of and course. Arnold Anderson and uh, on bass, and we did an album. And I wanted to ask you about your story with Bob because I've read that you played with him and studied with him. Like, what what was your story with Bob? Yeah, uh, I love Bob. You know, Bob Moses. You probably know he's a he's just an original character. Oh, like there's, absolutely. There's, there's there's only one. You yeah. know, he found his own channel into the universe completely unique you yeah. know he has that native american spirit you know he, he's very much admires native american uh you know the, the roots music yeah. and uh spiritual music you know um and of course he has that history you know all the way from back in the day with pat Metheny and all of that you know uh, bright size life it's iconic, you know. Um, 
I met Bob Moses when I was studying at Berkeley. Uh, mm. It was somewhere between 1980, around 1984, 85 or so. And uh, he had a band called Mozamba. And uh, that was uh, uh, with uh, David Fuzinski on guitar oh, wow. and um, uh, Billy Martin, you know, from Medeski yeah, yeah, Martin yeah. and Wood. Stan Strickland was in the band. Um, and, uh, 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 yeah, a few other musicians and we used to play around the Boston area. We had a regular gig every week, you know, and when I met John McLaughlin, he actually came to see me play with Bob Moses. Oh, really? Night. Oh, wow, man. Okay. Yeah. And, and Bob was like, uh Oh, I think my bass player is gone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when he saw McLaughlin show up, he was like, Oh, he knew something was up. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, we also had great gigs with Aiden Essen in Turkey. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Aiden Essen to me is one of the very, very, if not the very best musician I know alive mm. on planet Earth. Like his level of musicianship is so far beyond anything I can comprehend. You know, he tested out of Berkeley in a in a, a year and a half. He won the Paris classical piano composition at the same year that he got a jazz deal with Columbia Records. Crazy, yeah. And I remember the the president of Columbia saying, "I've never had a talent like that since John Coltrane." Now, why Aiden Essen is not a household name like Chick Corea or Keith Jarrett? That's another question, you know, and uh, we can get into that some other time, but it's just to say that the most in incredible humans are not necessarily the famous ones. Oh, sure. Definitely. So, yeah. you know, you might meet somebody that is very undercover about their abilities and their level of comprehension. And uh, you will not know until you pay attention, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Bob and Aiden and I, we played shows uh, together. Wow. And I remember, uh, I'll give you one sh short Bob Moses story. Uh, we were on the, we were on the road from Atatürk Airport in Istanbul to the venue. And it's Bob, Aiden and I in the cab and he makes the cab driver stop. And he got out. And he saw some tree in the woods there somewhere by the road and he cut a piece of the tree, you know, and then took the stick, right? <laughs> and then that night at the show, this, that oh, stick yeah. comes out and he's, he's using it to play the drums. And then, you know, when he was asked what he's doing with the stick and he was like, well, you know, it's part of the native spirit of the land that I'm bringing to the concert. Mm. You know? So that's a good uh, profile of, of Bob Moses. I, I dearly love Bob Moses, you know. Yeah. No, I, I said I have to ask yeah. you because, you know, I, I have a quite a big connection now with him for the last two years. And uh, yeah, I if, saw you tell her, if you sit see him send him my love you know? i will definitely i, will, yeah, definitely I have will. huge love and respect for him in fact he wanted me to play on an album that was never finished and this was i think three or four right before the pandemic mm. and there was no budget there was no nothing he had all these files and i remember i laid down a track for him and uh then i think like somehow he got the track and it, it got all complicated, like he wanted me to do all these other things. And then all of a sudden I had run out of money <laughs> because I was uh, um, in the pandemic and had no gigs sure. yeah. and I needed to do online lessons. And so uh, I had to stop that project, you know, but that's la the last thing I heard from Bob Moses. And mm. ever since then, you know, I hope he's doing well. Let's put it this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, otherwise, I, I want. Uh, I have that album on CD, which is Master Touch, by Torsten, who's again one of those guys, the Winkle, quite an underrated yeah. player. And uh, 
how, how did you end up on that album? You know, there's like Michael Brecker on it, who's our hero of everyone. And uh, you, you, what what's the story there? I think it was your first album also, right? Or no, one of the first, um, at least. My, my, my first album was with a band called Leaf mm. from Frankfurt. And the album is called One More Leaf. I think it's not on CD. It's so old that it's only on vinyl, <laughs> you know? Okay. So I, I've, I've had several albums before that, like, oh, okay, okay. really underground stuff, okay. you know, like, interesting stuff, like funny, you know, <laughs> funny, but hey, it's part of the history. So Torsten and I uh, knew, met each other in the early 80s, Already, okay. maybe 1982 or something like that, because we grew up in the same region, you know, our, our minds, he was in Frankfurt. We played in the same scene, you know, he's a guitar player with local bands, you know, I'm a bass player with local bands. We ended up in the same band for a while and he always had big dreams and huge confidence. So he was bold enough to just call, you know, people oh, like wow. Michael okay. Brecker in New York. Like he just, he had this kind of balls, you know, that I would have never done this. And somehow he convinced these people to be on his album, you know. And so he ended up with this album called Master Touch. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's basically Torsten and I with a bunch of famous people, surrounding ourselves with a bunch of famous people. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow he pulled it off, you know. It's like, give him the credit. And you know what, like, just last month he did it again. Because, uh, do you know a drummer named Karin Ziad? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, the monster. So last last month I played at the Frankfurt Jazz Festival with Torsten de Winkel and Karin Ziad. Trio. And, uh, 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 no, uh, Septet. Whoa. Uh, international band, all kinds of very interesting musicians. Wow. Um, some you might know. Um, and I will send you the link to uh, 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 the, the TV recording. Oh, shit, I have to check it out. I have, I have a bootleg link, you know, that I'm going to send you. Oh, please, I have to listen and, to uh, And so he did it again because Torsten loved the Maghreb and Friends album with New and Lay. Yeah, yeah, that's... And, and he was like, I want to play with this guy, you know. And so I was just kind of like th on my way through. I was going to Holland to uh, visit my mom and he was like hey I got this gig with a German jazz festival we're headlining with Karim Ziyad you want to play some bass you already had another bass player a dude that's playing with Trilock right now um, I think his name is Cunado Jonathan Cunado mm -hmm. so he, he was now kind of like Torsten's bass player in Europe but he invited me as a special guest, so I got to play two songs, you know, and I recorded them. And uh, um, Torsten is, uh, uh, yeah, he's he's just a good friend, you know. We're like child, almost childhood friends, you know. And uh, it was it was nice to see that he's still doing it, and yeah. uh, um, that he he we got to play with, uh, got to play some. Another challenging music is, uh, you know, Chabi. <laughs> <laughs> the chubby drum beat, like yeah, yeah, you, al yeah. You, you always think the one is in the wrong place, you know. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. I had to study quite quite hard to 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 learn this music again, you know. Yeah. Now at age sixty two, <laughs> still learning new things. Oh man, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah amazing, amazing. Huh? Uh, the, yeah. Uh, not to take too much of your uh, time, Kai, but like I, I wanted, to, I mentioned before, like already, uh, honor simplicity and respect the flow album. And uh, how did you decide to do that one? What what's the story behind that album? That you said, like, okay, I will release my debut as a leader. Let's put it like that. Yeah. Well, this was after I left Trilock, and uh, I was, you know, taking care of the family life and uh, yeah. I had time to put some new songs together so I put a demo together and I wanted to record an album and um, I contacted Trilock's management and at the time uh, his manager was Graham Lawson from the UK 
and Graham Lawson shopped my demo to a British label called the Name Label, N-A-M, N-A-I-M, and they were also in the business of distributing hi-fi equipment. So they were like a high-end label, a kind of specialized label for people who are freaks for hi-fi speakers and that type of stuff. And uh, they gave me a budget, and then mm-hmm. I could hire, I had enough money to hire two of my favorite musicians. And so I wanted to have, of course, Aiden, my number one, you yeah. know, and then I wanted to get uh, Paco Seri, oh, you know, oh, wow, really? the drummer, yeah, yeah, yeah because sure. I, I was like, oh, you know, he's my African brother from another mother. Uh, <laughs> I, I listened to Sixa, you know, from um, Paris, Yeah, yeah. That's and I was like, God, one. that drummer is amazing, you know, and then I tried to hire Paco over the phone. He didn't speak a word of English, you know, and my broken French, ah, Paco, uh, ça va, uh, c'est kai, uh, uh, you know, and before you knew it, like, I could not get through to him, the, the language, you know, and then I just, I was like, God, you know, I didn't know how to contact management in English, <laughs> I just couldn't make a connection, you know, and I was like, okay. And at that point, um, I went to see Steve Coleman, mm-hmm. and I discovered this drummer, Sean Rickman. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, holy Jesus, you know, that like most intelligent drumming I've ever heard. You know, I was like, wow, you know. And then I got to know him, and I decided to to hire him, and he was available. So we flew to England. We did everything live to two track, oh, wow. so there's okay. no overdubs possible. Oh. We had to do everything, mistakes and all. You know, that's you. It is what it is. <laughs> and uh, um, I wanted to have, you know, ideally multi-track, so I could fix my 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 mistakes. But it wasn't possible, you know. So this is that's why the album has a very much a room sound, like you're yeah. in the room, you know, with the band. But it is a good album, like oh, you know, if you, re- if you really listen into it, it's a bit cryptic, but uh, there are some moments, you know, with oh, really good musicianship. It's a killing album. That that's why yeah. I mentioned it. It's really, uh, I mean, also the music you wrote, you, you know, it's beautiful music, like. Uh, yeah tricky parts and nice melodies and everything so yeah 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 what's your process when writing music i wanted to ask you already that before when Mm -hmm. you said you were writing new music for the solo but like what's your process when writing let's say for a band or how do you start the composition well ideally you start from a a place of inspiration that's not music you know, like an idea or a person, um, a situation, you know, some kind of emotional content, you know. And, I, and then I use that. Let's say I'll give you an example, Mamba Point on the uh, Honor Simplicity yeah. album. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote that when my father passed away uh, in a war. Uh, there was a war criminal Charles Taylor who became president and he assassinated the then president of which my father was in the administration and uh, the war completely shut down the country and my father he was diabetic and uh, when they shut down the country uh, all the insulin shipments stopped and he went into a diabetic shock and died and uh, so I had some something to process and uh, uh, Mamba Point was um, a place in Liberia that I m- remember when I was a child living in, in Monrovia in West Africa. I, that's my favorite spot and it reminds me of my dad. Mm. So, you know, I kept that, that feeling in mind and, and it was kind of like happiness, you know. Um, and so that's why that song has kind of an upbeat thing. And uh, then I, I just start somewhere, you know. Um, but if you're asking for the system behind my process, um, sometimes it starts with the bass line, sometimes it's a melody, sometimes it's a chord progression. I can start from different places, but I think there's always a, a system 
which is the the first idea has to be a strong one like i have to really resonate with it emotionally and feel like i really 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 like this idea yeah and then i take that that um as a benchmark for everything else that i add so let's say if your song is made of 12 elements you know i'm just taking a random number you know this could be the different instruments or different parts of a song let's say you have 12 things that you need before you can put together your song i'll find thing number one which could be a bass line boom, bing, bing, mm -hmm. bing, 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 you know where i feel like yes i'm in a in a in a mental state and i really uh feel united with this piece of music and then this is number one, like Lego piece number one. Yeah. And then I look for Lego piece number two, like what could fit? Or, or, okay, I have a bass line, so it must be a melody or a chord progression or a drum beat. So I pick one, let's say a mel melody. And then I experiment. I will record the bass line and put it on loop yeah. and take another instrument and then try to improvise a melody. And if the melody is not close to as good I, I need to get the same feeling if i don't have the same feeling i throw it out i don't use it if i get the same feeling i'm like okay this will work now i have two pieces and i keep going until it's finished you know then right. i know i will like it e even if the whole world doesn't like it <laughs> but you have I, to, yeah. I, I, I will listen to it or my I can give it to my family and say this is this is part of me you know mm. this is real it's authentic it's I think it's more important to be real than to be liked yeah <laughs> even though sometimes it's harder to survive that way I understand that that problem too you know so yeah I think that's pretty much the process mm. um, where I still yeah. have to learn is is how to package it and how to market uh i have always neglected that um i have not put much energy into marketing myself or you don't see much video podcasts by kai eckhart you know and i want to start more you know to get engaged because there are so many interesting things like what you're doing you know is a good example and, uh, you know, I do want to have a regular presence. Yeah. I'm just right now uh, confused because there are so many outlets. There's Instagram, there is yeah, I know what you mean. Facebook, yeah. there is, um, uh, what else? YouTube, Snapchat, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, scary. TikTok. And I'm just like, I don't want to put so much energy into producing myself and then lose connection to the source. Yeah. You know, where, where I feel yeah. happiest is when I'm creating music. So I have to find a balance, but I, I have to do some, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out where I fit in, you know. Mm. Sometimes I also feel like there's already so much out there. Why do I even have to do anything, you know? Mm. There's enough, but I know that that's not, I shouldn't be thinking that way. No, definitely not, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, come on, you're, you're, yeah, I'm so happy we got to talk, you know, that's, you're like, a monster player and composer and you should yeah it's yeah i haven't a, done an interview song. in in years like oh, really my first interview in at least five years really know? oh wow honestly yeah, yeah. okay wow okay now yeah. i just I, I listened the other day to 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 this mclaughlin record and i was like shit i'll write you an email let's see maybe, maybe you you know i've been doing interviews with so many guys that you've played with through the years and uh -huh. uh, I was like, yeah, okay, let's try it. And I was so happy when you said yes. So that, yeah. thanks for sharing some of these thoughts, you know. And Yeah, uh, man, insight. you should find Aiden Essen, man. Like, oh, uh, if, you have, if you have his email, please send it to me. I would love to talk to I him. I will, I will. He's, he's, yeah, I mean, no, obviously, I know is... he's playing. He's a monster. So underrated player, man. Such a... Uh, yeah, like, like just a, a, a genius. Yeah. Completely overlooked, you know, which is a shame on the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's but yeah. that's that's part of the industry like you said it's uh, uh you know it's like so many guys out there who i think i think everyone i'd interview I, i'm like shit you guys should be you know 
up there, but yeah, yeah. But it's not yeah. how the this stupid internet and marketing works works, unfortunately. So sometimes, yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I think um, uh, I've also tried to understand why is that you know because in a way because it exists there must be a reason right or mm. there must be a model, a framework, how you can interpret it so it makes sense you know mm. because it, things yeah. have to make sense, you know if they don't make sense you cannot be grounded you you will be confused and being confused is not healthy you know so Definitely, you have yeah. to make sense out of it one way or another. And a lot of people make sense out of it by uh, getting angry, you know, that's one way to make sense out of it by saying it's fucked up, you know, yeah, uh, sure. and uh, I'm angry and there's something wrong with the world. That is a way to make sense of it, but it's not healthy. No, definitely you know? not. So yeah. I think the, I, I think the way um, I look at it right now is in terms of attractors. Uh, you know, rather than looking at different people and whether people are good or bad, I look at what are the attractors. So let's say what is the attractor of marketing? And you can clearly see that the money is flowing into commerce, mm -hmm. you know, which means that the music is a, a tool that is used yeah. to attract people's attention towards um, releasing funds and money into the direction of those who are controlling the, the channels, the marketing channels. Yeah. And then the channels themselves are funded. If you look at their funding, like who funds the big marketing companies, then you see you have nation states and nation states have usually a propagandistic agenda. You know, if you do something that is uh, progressive or that is um, questioning the status quo, you know, the big silverback gorilla yeah, yeah. in yeah. the room <laughs> who who's who's like, I am the boss. If you question that or if your music is too avant garde, then they, you know, they will either say nobody wants to hear that because people want fast, easy. Yeah. yeah. You know, sort of almost like the equivalent of McDonald's cheeseburgers yeah. for music because there's lots of salt and sugar. Uh, it gets you addicted. People spend money. They eat lots of it, but it's unhealthy and they get cancer yeah. and they die. But you can see that people have forgotten that you, you cannot only make money. You also have to make sure that you give back what you take, you know, sure. and at yeah. least uh, double check in the rear mirror, mirror of whether what you're doing is healthy. And when that's not the case, you're like, wow, maybe people are not healthy. You know what I mean? Well, maybe that's... people with lots of money, lots of power are a little bit screw loose in the head. They are literally not 100% all here, sure. you know. Sure. And that's a scary thing if you think of that the masses could go crazy collectively. But then when you see what's going on in Israel and Palestine, you know that it's real, you know, yeah. that is very it's... real. When nobody worries about babies anymore, then mm -hmm. you're like something is going you know, in a very bad direction, you know, and we yeah. have historic precedent of the human race all the way back to the Nazis and uh, oh, Stalin. Yeah. And, you know, the genocide to the Native Americans, you know, Napoleon and Genghis Khan and <laughs> yeah, the pharaohs, right. you know, sure, okay. yeah. and, and it's always, it's always the there, pattern, right. you know, to, if you're looking at the pattern is always like people getting into positions of power, getting corrupted by power and then creating suffering. And it's kind of like this keeps going yeah. round and round and round, you know. True. Yeah. And so the artists are kind of like narrators, you know, we're narrating the uh, and interpreting the world emotionally, yeah. you know, for the subconscious mind. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's scary, but it's the only life we have. You know what I mean? Like um, uh, at least, you know, I feel like it, you just have to find a way to make sense of it for yourself. And not come to the include to the conclusion that there is fundamentally something wrong with the universe, because mm. really no, it's not the fault of the universe, you know. 
Yeah. It's a uh, um, we we are we we are kind of like more like an experiment, you know. And yep. uh, if the experiment goes well, fantastic. If it doesn't, it will continue in a different way, and we will be part of it as well. We just yep. look different. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like Nicely we just put, yeah. we will transform, but we will just look different, but we're still the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you summoned it nicely. Yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah, but no, uh, no, no, it's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you mentioned the new album uh, coming out next year. Well, what are the plans for you for the upcoming months? Uh, I mean, are you coming to Europe with some project again for a tour, or can we catch you in Europe sometime? Or uh, let's see. But well, there's not much in the woodworks right now. Um, I've been contacted by Giovanni Hidalgo. He's a, a conga player. Mm -hmm. You know, he plays with Gonzalo Rubalcaba. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, he's like in the Afro-Cuban tradition. Yeah. He's in Florida. You know, Puerto Rico. Like supposedly we're, there's a show in Puerto Rico for next year. Oh. So I might be playing with Giovanni and with Oz Ezeldin, like uh, uh, the keyboard player. Um, then um, I'm probably, uh, well, I have also some Garage Mahal shows <laughs> in, in the woodwork. So I think my main band for next year is going to be Garage Mahal and then working on some Sideman projects. <laughs> um, but other than that, like my schedule is fairly wide open and uh, um, I'm also working in the University of California. Yeah, I have a class that I teach. Okay. Um, so my income is very diversified. You know, there's some online stuff, some teaching in the school, some gigs. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, it's a good balance right now, you know, and um, we will see what happens like um i'm not really in the mood of trying too too hard you know i don't want to try too hard but i, I want to be able to do whatever i do i want to do it well you know yeah. so that i don't have to be ashamed of it later in life <laughs> or regret you know i don't want to have regrets yeah that's important yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm quite happy, you know, with where I am in life. Like, if I if I had to die right now, and I don't want to die right now, I still have children and stuff, you know. German, yeah. But if that's what what where to happen, it it would have been a, a good, nice coming around full circle, you know. Like I pretty much <laughs> yeah. got everything I wanted, so now I just have to become a better person, you know, mm -hmm. and and work on myself and be more confident and less confused and m more forgiving with the world and myself and and have a bit, bit more balls a bit more guts to go for what i what i want to do next you know that yeah. i think is, is my personal project <laughs> no but yeah definitely good to hear yeah. that man beautiful but uh kai i'll, I'll leave you a nice uh, what is today sunday uh, today is Sunday. Sunday, yeah. It's the, it's the 10th of December. Yeah, exactly. But a nice yeah. Sunday afternoon there on the West Coast. And uh, uh, thanks for sharing some of these thoughts, man. I appreciate it so much. And so so nice to hear you talk. So beautiful. Yeah, uh, awesome. And uh, uh, I will send you... I Yeah.